Hi guys and welcome to part 19 of Skyrim Mod Sanctuary. Now I'm sorry I didn't get a video out last week as most of you probably realised I released a mod last week called Dynavision and had to make a video for that and then of course there was the inevitable small fixes, improvements etc. I've also been working on a second mod that's just been released called the Imaginator. I'm going to do a video about that one as soon as possible. And if it makes you feel any better, I have not been able to play. I've not played Skyrim, which is why I couldn't really do a video reviewing any mods. And I've not even had time to play Mass Effect 3 all that much. And I planned literally not to take a break until I did one single playthrough. Um, and I've got nowhere. But enough excuses, what have I got for you this time? Well, as most of you have realised, the 1.5 patch is in beta at the moment and has a lot of bug fixes, some great ones actually for me. And it also has kill cam shots for spells and bows. So as you can see, I'm starting a completely new game, even though I said I wasn't going to, and I'm going to play an archer. But I've only just made this decision, and so I have not really had time to decide exactly which mods I'm going to do. But I do have a couple of mods for you in this video, ones that I think you might like. But before I do that, I want to do a quick shout out to a few other video bloggers that you guys might like. And the first one is MXR. Now he has a series called Skyrim Mods Weekly in which he reviews a lot of mods. I mean, he does far more mods per week than I do. Um, and he has a very, very professional setup. His videos have this very cool intro, great music, um, and it's just generally very, very well presented. And he covers a complete range of mods, so there should be something for everyone. So go and check his channel out. Now the next shout out is for Darkfire Gaming. Now he has mod review videos, but they tend to be um, more focused, slightly less mods per episode, in fact quite often just one mod, and he tend takes a lot of time reviewing it, very relaxed, very um, atmospheric, cinematic style to his videos. I really liked them, I was really impressed with the video he did on the Pinewoods Cottage mod, so you guys should check that out. He also makes um, at least one mod that I know of and has a video about that, so be sure to check that out. And the next shout out is for Arsenal Robert, so it's all the way to the other side of the world, Australia I believe, judging by the accent. And he does videos that are quite similar to Darkfire Gaming, he focuses on one or two mods and really goes into some detail on them. He's also pretty good at staying very up to date, he covers mods literally sometimes hours after they get posted. He actually already had a video out for the Imaginator mod, which I've not even managed to uh, get a video for, and I'm one of the authors of it. So he's, you know, he's bang up to date, uh, and you will, you'll be able to spot some really good mods coming out if you follow his channel. And the last shout out is for Cheification. Now this is a channel by Che or Lord Che as he likes to call himself and he is a great video maker. He makes a variety of videos for a variety of games but those include Skyrim mods and he is really funny and very entertaining. Check out the Skyrim mod video he did about Thor's hammer. It's absolutely brilliant. There it is! Oh, look at it in all of its bloody glory! Yeah, so let's go and hit some people, shall we? Let's go and find some lowly citizens to bonk on the head. Off we go! You know, there are a couple of people in Skyrim, especially Whiterun, that really tick me off. One of them being Belathor, I'm gonna go and nail in a minute. That came out wrong. Belathor, I'm going to go and um, hit with a large hammer in a minute. And this guy! So, be sure to check out his channel. It is very entertaining. Um, and again, Check out all of these channels, they are very informative and there should be something for everyone in one of those. Okay, that's enough about other people's videos, let's get on with mine. And the first mod I'm going to show you in this video is the Cloaks of Skyrim mod. Now, not surprisingly, it adds cloaks or 
capes. I think technically they're capes. I don't know. There's some definition for this. They don't have hoods. Even though this character has a hood, that's part of the outfit. Um, but the cloaks, as you can see, they are fully havoc meshed. They move when you move. Um, they look very cool. They're a little rough around the edges. They look like they've seen a bit of wear and tear. And they come in a variety of colours. So you should be able to find something that matches uh, your look. You will notice that they do clip on the shoulders of certain armour a little bit. Not much, and it's not that noticeable, but it is there. But as you can see, it generally makes the, uh, the character just look a little bit more imposing, a little bit more impressive. Now, the female versions are a little smoother. They're very smooth around the edges, and so that's a, a slightly different look. And one of the things that I am a little disappointed with is that you can't have the smooth ones as males and the rough ones as females. That's one of the things I would like to see in a future update. So, you know, some of my characters might want a, a smooth cape. I don't know. It's, it's my only quibble, I think. Now these items are craftable so you can get them very early on and they just use linen wraps as the ingredients so you should be able to get them pretty much at the start of the game. And that's about it really, it's a very simple mod, um, it's very easy to install so I'm not going to bother showing you that and it's really worth it, it, it adds very unique look to, to your character. And there's no downside to it, so, you know, it doesn't take the slot of anything else, so it doesn't stop you from wearing whichever magic armor you want, so, why not? April 23rd, 57, Cape caught in a jet turbine. Hmm, you can't generalize about this Meta thing. Man, Express Elevator, Diner Guy, Snag on Takeoff, Splashdown, Sucked into a Vortex, No Kicks! Luckily for us, Skyrim does not actually let it snag on anything. Now, those of you who've watched a few of my videos probably already know I'm a big fan of the realistic lighting mod, and I always use that and often use it in conjunction with Skyrim Enhanced Shaders. But there is a another mod that does something similar, and that mod is called Realistic Colors Realistic Nights. So I've decided to give that one a try and see how I like it. Now, the first thing that hit me when looking at the comparisons between Vanilla and RCRN was that the, the kind of colour scheme they've used seems to match the game's developers' intentions. It still doesn't look too stylized, but it does look more realistic and quite a lot nicer. So the next thing is, how does it behave at night? Well, in the early evening, where the vanilla game is still quite bright, the RCRN gets darker a lot faster, and, and it has a very nice feeling to the darkness. It's, you've still got quite good visibility, but it definitely feels more nighttime. And by about 8 o'clock in the evening, the difference is literally night and day. The vanilla is still quite bright, and the RCRN is nicely dark. I mean, it really does give you that slightly creepy feeling. Now, I am using the RCRN Pure, which is the darkest of the options, but there are actually two other options with various degrees of darkness that you can choose, but the Pure is brilliant for me. And indoors, obviously, there is a difference there too. The vanilla's got all that ambient yes. light, whereas with RCRN, a lot less ambient light, so the light sources are much more important. Shadows are far more pronounced, and you just get a, a genuinely more realistic feeling. And also when dungeon crawling. I mean, the vanilla dungeons are way too bright. Even without light sources, you can see perfectly. But with RCRN, bring a torch, bring a magic light, just bring something that's going to help you see. If you've been playing just with vanilla lighting up until now, trust me on this. Using this mod or realistic lighting or one of the other shader mods that makes dungeons darker will change the way the game feels to you so much. It really does make the experience a lot more intense. Now, the mod has several cool sounding features like HDR double pass, premium FXAA and hybrid shaders. And I don't exactly know what all of those do. I'm very interested in the HDR if they've managed to improve that. I've seen glimpses of it and it does look nice. But the mod authors actually told me that the best way 
to judge this mod is to play it, to literally play it for several hours because then you get to see those sunrises, those unexpected moments when you pass around a building and suddenly the sun's glaring right at you. Those moments that you just can't plan in one hour of taking some video. So I am going to do exactly that. I am not going to finish this review um, until next week. I am going to play the game and see how it feels. So far, I have to say, I'm very impressed. It looks very nice. I I think it's um, it's very comparable to all the other shader mods. It's not as stylized as some of the ENB mods are, but um, it sticks very closely to the sort of original Skyrim feel while still making it look so much more realistic. Um, and I really like this. And of course, inevitably, people are going to want to know how it compares to realistic lighting. And basically, it's a very good uh, comparison because the both of them make darkness feel really nice and they make dungeons feel very scary um, and generally improve things. I would have to say, on my initial assessment, RCRN looks better. It's, it's not like um, huge leaps, but it's subtle differences little ways where it looks better. However, on the flip side, RCRN does have a performance drop. I found it about 10%. So if you're getting 30 or 40 frames a second, you'll probably lose four. If you're getting 120, you'll probably lose 10 frames a second. It's not that bad, actually. That's pretty good. But obviously, realistic lighting gives no performance drop whatsoever. So you're going to have to take that into consideration. For me, at the moment, I'm tempted to say that if you have the performance, use RCN, RCRN, excuse me. Uh, but again, both of the mods are absolutely superb. It really, I think, is going to come down to what can your system handle. And one last thing to note about this mod is that the FXAA process they use does smudge the letters in your menu a little bit. Um, it's not huge, but if it does annoy you, you can disable it. However, I recommend against it. I actually use the RCRN FXAA and the in-game FXAA. Uh, and I think they look really nice together. And if you do disable the RCRN FXAA because of the way they've done the light, the textures will seem a tiny bit too sharp, I think. So I actually like both FXAA to be enabled. And I'm just getting used to the menu being slightly blurry. Now, installing RCRN is not that hard. It's a tiny bit different, but it's not that hard. There are two ways of installing it. There's the manual installer and an auto installer. I suggest using the auto installer. Basically, once you've downloaded it, you extract it out, you'll get an executable file. You double click on it and it will ask you which version you want. I want the pure. You pick which you want it then. <laughs> asks you to agree that you're not stupid and then asks you where your Skyrim can be found. Once you've um, put the path to your game in, click next and start. And it's pretty simple, so now it's installed. However, if you want to disable the FXAA, you need to go to your Skyrim folder, that is the place you find your tesv.exe file. Inside that game folder, you'll find an uninstalled realistic colors. If you double click that, it will uninstall what you've just installed. But if you wish to tweak the um, FXAA, go along to the INJ FX shaders and you'll see a file called FXA3 blah 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 and then rename me. Basically, what you have to do is they suggest you delete this file. I actually don't. I would just rename it to dot old yes and then rename this one the the one with a funny name like so so now it's using this one and this one does not have the fxaa in it so now when you run your game this one will have no fxaa enabled however i don't want that so i want to do no fxaa and rename this one back to what it was before. So I now have the FXAA back. And it's that easy, it's not hugely difficult. 
And finally, one little gem of a mod that takes your big compass and makes it a little bit thinner. It's not a huge difference, but it actually really does improve the way it looks. It makes that compass a little less obnoxious. Um, it's also completely compatible with the immersive hood. He's made an immersive hood version, so it works with that as well. And that's it for this video. Again, I'd like to apologize for missing last week's video, and I will try my best not to do that again. I have a couple other videos planned for the next few days, including the next episode of my modding Fallout New Vegas, and a video showcasing the Imaginator. Feel free to join me for those videos if you want to, and if you enjoyed this video, remember, click the like button. I always appreciate that, and I look forward to seeing you next time. But until then, have fun.